Each year, more than 75,000 hospital patients, including patients on dialysis, become infected with central line-associated bloodstream infections, and as many as 25% of those infected patients die, according to a study conducted by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. When initiating dialysis with a catheter, medical professionals must follow recommended infection prevention guidelines. Doing so can reduce the rate of central line-associated bloodstream infections, decrease hospital costs, and most importantly, improve clinical care. Hand hygiene is the first vital step to initiating dialysis with a catheter and is a primary factor in reducing infections in the dialysis center. Alcohol-based hand rub is the preferred method for routine hand hygiene. Apply the product to the palm of one hand. Make sure to cover all surfaces of your hands and fingers, then rub your hands together until they're dry. You must perform hand hygiene before touching a patient, before beginning a clean or sterile procedure, after being exposed to body fluid, after touching a patient, and after touching the patient's surroundings. You must also perform hand hygiene before you put on new clean gloves. After each interaction you have with a potentially contaminated surface, you should remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. You're not required to wear gloves before assembling supplies at the patient cubicle, but you should perform hand hygiene to reduce the risk of contaminating the outside of the supply packages with microbes. Supplies needed include a clean barrier, antiseptic agent, clean gloves, and sterile syringes filled with sterile saline. These supplies are typically placed on top of the clean barrier on the tray attached to the dialysis chair. Because the initiation of dialysis poses a risk for blood contamination, you must wear personal protective gear, including gloves, eye protection, and a mask and gown. A mask or face shield may reduce the risk of contamination of the catheter or site from sneeze or cough droplets containing infectious material. To further reduce the risk of catheter contamination, you may also want to ask patients to wear masks. Scrubbing catheter ports or hubs is one of the most critical processes to preventing contamination of the connecting site and inside of the catheter exposed to the patient's blood. Before cleaning the connection area, place a sterile or new clean barrier under the catheter. The connection area of each catheter consists of a lure lock fitting on the end of the catheter lumen or hub that is covered by a cap when the catheter is not in use. There are two approaches recommended for proper scrubbing of the catheter connection area. In the first and more commonly used approach, you disinfect the cap and exposed areas of the catheter near the connection site by scrubbing it. Use an antiseptic agent like chlorhexidine, alcohol, or povidone iodine before removing the cap and connecting the dialysis blood lines to the lure lock connector. With this approach, the areas under the secure caps are assumed to be protected and sterile. If they're not, you might contaminate the inside of the catheter and could expose the patient's blood to harmful bacteria. The second approach requires an extra step. You scrub the lure lock hub of the catheter located under the cap with antiseptic agent before you connect the catheter hubs to the dialysis machine's lines and tubing. Vigorously rub alcohol wipes across the hubs for proper cleansing and to thoroughly remove any visible blood or clots. You must do this properly to prevent bacteria from getting into the patient's bloodstream and circulating through the body. If you don't perform this step properly, you're putting the patient at risk of septicemia or bacteremia, which are the major bloodstream infections that occur all too frequently in dialysis patients with catheters. After you clean each hub, connect a sterile syringe to the lure lock hub. After the hubs are cleaned, standard protocol is to remove the anticoagulant and to check to make sure each port is able to aspirate blood into the syringe. Next, remove the syringes one at a time and connect the dialysis bloodline to the lure lock hub. Do this before removing the second syringe and connecting the second dialysis bloodline. 
To ensure safety, refer to the Access of Central Venous Catheter for Initiation of Dialysis checklist to make sure that you always follow proper procedure. Most dialysis patients with catheter-based vascular access use tunnel dialysis catheters. You need to inspect and clean the exit site. Before taking care of the exit site, perform your hand hygiene and assemble your supplies, including antiseptic agent, clean gloves, personal protective equipment, a new dressing, and antibiotic ointment. Because exit site care poses a risk for you to be contaminated with infected body fluids, you must wear personal protective equipment. Remove the old dressing and discard it in an appropriate infectious waste receptacle. Once you've done this, remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Put on clean gloves and inspect the exit site and tunnel for redness, heat, swelling, tenderness, or pus or other discharge. Then cleanse the area with an antiseptic solution like chlorhexidine by using an outward circular pattern. Start at the exit site and move outward in a circular pattern. Once the area is dry, apply antimicrobial ointment to the exit site and then apply a fresh dressing. Finally, remove your gloves and perform proper hand hygiene. To ensure safety, refer to the Central Venous Catheter Exit Site Care Checklist to ensure that you always follow proper procedures.